Welcome to the Fantasy Football Hub YouTube channel. Today, I'm joined by FPL expert FPL Salah, who is going to be telling us his transfers and how his team is looking for game week 26. Abdul, pleasure to have you back on. Another green arrow, my friend. How are you doing? Yeah, cheers, Jack. It was a small one, but a green to green. So, yeah, it was a frustrating, a frustrating week uh, for a lot of us. But, yeah, luckily, game week 26 isn't too far away. Let's have a quick look back at your team from, from 25, just to give a little bit of context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a very small green, but... Still decent, 85 points, not bad. Couple people yeah. in there that, that you brought in for the double that just did not do well. I mean, by a couple, I mean pretty much every player. Yeah. It's a bit of a joke, really, but these things do happen. Yeah, I mean, the only like player who actually performed at the doubles was was Haaland, and yeah. like everyone had him. Uh, Dewey didn't do much. Um, you know, Walker obviously well, started the two games over Ake. Van Dijk scored, didn't have him. Foden didn't do anything. And then obviously my two Liverpool attackers were both injured in the first game. So I know a lot of people will be in the same boat as well, Jack. But yeah, it's one of those. It's like, it's just a lot because in its variance, I mean, these things happen from time to time and they just happen to ha happen. Like in the whole game week where City and Liverpool had, you know, a, a double and, the, and really good fixtures as well. I think that is why it hurts a bit more is because it's not just like random double game week players from decent teams. It's these are the two best, well, two of the three best teams this season yeah. for FBL players. And they've all let you down. Uh, Haaland, yeah, but you play triple captain. So you, you probably want a little bit more than 10 points. So yeah. even his points that aren't, aren't phenomenal. But yeah, you know, the, you can, all you can do is just continue to make good decisions. I think that brings us on to, to what you're planning for next week. Just first of all, how many transfers do you have? Uh, so I've got one free transfer. So I will be one taking free. a hit this week. Okay. Um, at least one hit. I've got uh, nine active players at the moment, so the plan is to take out Jota and Darwin uh, to Solanke and and Huang. Um, so I think those are going to be quite popular moves this week. Um, I think Solanke is because well, it's either going to be people bringing back Solanke and Watkins. Um, so I kept Watkins. I'll be bringing back Solanke because obviously he's got the double in twenty eight and he's got a good fixtures up until then. I need to kind of plan my transfers now. Uh, you know, to attack that double game week. And, you know, possibly double game, uh, blank uh, game week 29 as well. And Huang is just such a, a great uh, option for the next three weeks. Um, even though they've still not got a, a guaranteed fixture in game week 29, I still think he'll probably be worth it over the next three game weeks. And, you know, hoping, you know, there is an upset and, and we'll end up having a fixture in 29. Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quiz you on this because it's something that I've been thinking about myself. Is, mm -hmm. is the player that you get in for Jota this week. Now, obviously, Huang doesn't play in 29, but... Okay, so just uh, just a more general question. What are your thoughts on free hit right now, 29? Are you are you kind of, like, moving towards that or leaving it open? Um, I'm, I'm still leaving it open, right? Because at the moment, I'm not... I'm, I'm bringing in, like, players who... I mean, at the moment, I've got five players who play in 29. Okay. Um, and I think the looting game, I think, uh, will be on uh, because, obviously, there's a high chance that, that that game goes on. So I should have doubt you to play that week as well and you know the odds are that there, there are going to be a few upsets at least one upset uh, in, in that uh, you know in that game between nine so i don't i don't want to play too safe in in terms of you know, bringing in only players who play in game week 29 and you know sacrificing you know the small term gains um so huang's a player who you know could very well you know have a fixture in game week 29 um if we always be uh, if we always beat brighton so it's you know it's it's not like you know, it's not like saluting against City. You know, that is, you know, a very feasible result. Um, so I'm bringing in players who, you know, have a, a decent chance of, of having a fixture in game week 29, but also at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on it as well. So at the moment, my plan is not to play the, the free hit in 29. I, I would like to save it for 34. However, I'm not going to be too kind of rigid on that. So if it comes to the point where, you know, we get to game week, you know, 29 and there's only three or four fixtures and I've got like, you know, five players, I'll use it. And I think that's probably the best way to approach it. Um, yep. And I think this week's transfers are quite important because this is the week we have to kind of gamble. Whereas after this game, you know, we've got the, the, the FA Cup fifth round and we'll know the full fixture list, you know, for 29. So we can kind of start planning for that. But I think this week um, it's just about taking a calculated risk as we, and that's what I'm doing. Okay. Then moving on to the player that you're, you're bringing in this week for Jota, Huang. Now, the reason I ask ask you about this because i've done this move already i did it i did it last night i brought huang in and i've had a little bit of regret a little bit of regret about it maybe you can can tell me why i'm being i'm not thinking this through properly but i got him in right and obviously the fixture this week is great and that is one of the reasons why i got him in this week over over the likes of someone that could play in 29 you know like a douglas louise or a or a bailey but moving forward like 27 
you get to 27. There's, I think there's a decent chance that you'd be benching Quang in this game. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about, I don't know, not necessarily, but say you're looking at a Foden to Sun this week, then yeah. you, you'd be, you'd have to bench probably Palmer away at Brentford or play Huang away at Newcastle. So I think in theory, he then goes onto the bench. And then in 28 as well, he, maybe he then plays, but if Foden is his son here in this situation, then you're benching, I mean, Watkins home at Tottenham, Palmer home to Newcastle. Huang obviously has a great fixture at home to Fulham, but I don't know, he doesn't necessarily start. Obviously, he's still good to have on the bench. And then you're at yeah. 29 anyway. So what do you think so about that? The thing about that is, I did think about this, and I thought that 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 would be the same case for any player I bring in. So if I brought in a Douglas Louise or a or a Leon Bailey who play in game week twenty nine, it's the same situation. They're going to probably be benched in game week twenty seven and twenty eight anyway. Yeah, for for Palmer, but um, the big game is that Sheffield United fixture. Yeah, that's fair. Is, you know, the, the the one that can you know he's possibly even a captaincy contender in that game. And then on top of that, look, you'd rather have a good bench option. Like yep. Newcastle and Fulham are really good games. And if something happens to my team, and you know, like a, a Palmer gets injured or a player gets suspended, uh, where you know which which could very well happen, then I've got you know a fantastic option in Wang there. So yeah. yeah, so I mean that that situation is going to be the same in any player you bring in this week. I mean, I think we've I think me and you've got similar teams, and a lot of people have got similar teams with that same midfield. Yeah. So if you are going to go jot to Juan, you're going to have that situation where you'll play him next, you'll play him this week, but you're possibly likely going to bench him the next two weeks. Um, but I don't see a problem with that because the fixture this week is good. Um, he might be needed in those two weeks. And again, if you bring in like players like you know Louise, who is a good solid option, but he's not you know exciting. He's not going to get you know he's not likely to get a big huge haul. Um, you know Bailey, he's a bit of a you know, a minute's risk. He probably will start, but he does get subbed off early. So you might as well have a guy there who, you know, is 90 minutes on possibly or likely on penalties as well. And has got, you know, three fantastic fixtures. Yeah, I I, I understand that that reasoning. I guess the thing I was thinking was if, if they're not going to play in 27 and 28, now obviously any sort of injury and that is the main thing. Yeah, the fixtures yeah. are better for, I prefer the, the Wang's fixtures over a, a Louise or I think it's a better pick anyway when they're both playing. Then I was kind of thinking, well, it's more like a, a two game week move, 26 and 29, where you know that Louise is going to play and Huang has a decent chance at not playing. But that's probably getting a little bit a little bit uh, too pedantic. You did say uh, he's an outside captaincy shout this week. What are you yeah. thinking at the moment? For captaincy, for me, it's on Haaland at the moment, but I really do think it's really close between Haaland, Saka and Huang. Um, I think all three have got great fixtures and I think Haaland's minutes this week were I mean, they've got they've got a Champions League game midweek, so I mean, possibly he you know comes off early if they're winning. But I think with with Sang um, with Saka and Huang, they're going to get you know the full you know the full ninety minutes. So that's the only reason why I kind of put them in in the conversation uh, this week uh, with Haaland. But all three are good options, and I think if you want to maybe you know if you are a bit of a maverick and you want to kind of grab you know some some risk, then you know Huang and Saka are great options. I was really tempted to go for for Saka this week, but then just. Watching the a little bit of the um, Arsenal Porto game, Porto game, yeah. Porto Arsenal game. I don't know. I also feel like there might be a little bit of a. It could go either way. Obviously, you you might get a reaction and and they just go for it against Newcastle, or they could be a little bit riled by that or upset and just not play as yeah, well I as, mean, as they have been playing. I, I wouldn't look too much about, into that game. Uh, I mean, look, they've had no shots on target, which is, I think was the first time. Crazy the game, yeah, since two thousand two thousand eleven or something. So, I mean, you'll have these one-off games, and I think as Champions League, they were away from home. You know, it's a different dynamic to Newcastle at home, and you know, in the league, they've been you know fantastic, putting up great numbers. You know, going back and forward. So, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't let, I wouldn't kind of give that that as a reason for not to captain them, but. I just think you know it's it's really close uh, between those three. Okay, so let's talk about your uh, your transfers. How locked in are they? Have you done any yet, or they're just going to happen? No, they're not. They're not done yet. But the thing is, the way my team is shaped up, I've not really got any other choice really, because um, I've got the two. I need to get rid of players who aren't playing this week, you know, to get out of yeah. the eleven. And I think those are the obvious options. I mean, obviously, I, I could bring in you know a David Luiz or a or a Bailey. Um, you know, and then obviously, you know, possibly if I want to take a punt, you know, go for Hoyland instead of Solanke. But I just think, you know, that's just another extra, um, you know, a minus four when it comes to double game at 28. I might as well just make that move now. You know, it's it's not beyond the realms of possibility that, you know, Solanke gets a haul. Not like a haul, but he only scores against City. You know, he's he's, he's 90 minutes on penalties, whereas, you know, Hoyland might get, you know, hauled off early. So I don't really see anything kind of exciting. So I think these moves are probably like, I would say 90, 95% locked in. 
Okay. Looking at your your AI recommended moves, um, the recommended transfer is to to sell Darwin for Solanke. Is that is that a little bit too obvious? I don't know. Is that is there upside to Chase elsewhere? It, it feels a bit weird bringing him in for for City at home. Obviously, you know you're going to need him for 28, where he's going to be captained by everyone. Yeah. Can you wait a couple of weeks on him, or does he have to come in this week, or is it kind of wasting a transfer really not to do it? I mean, the, the, the reason why um, it's risky or like, you know, to, to, to ignore him this week is because everyone is going to, you, you know, you're going to make that move in 28. So it's one of those where if, if Luton, uh, sorry, if Bournemouth didn't have a double in 28, then you, yeah, you you know, you could possibly ignore him up, up, up until your wild card. But because he's just going to be the standout captaincy option in 28, you know, that's a transfer already booked in. Um, yeah. Unless you want to, you know, unless you plan to go without him, which I think, you know, if you want to do it, fair enough. But, you know, that's not for me. That's, you know, he's, for me, can be the, you know, by far the best cut in the option that week. So that's the only reason why I think, you know, you just do the transfer now. Um, You know, if, like, I was talking about Hoyland earlier, if, you, if you're looking for a punt somewhere else, then, you know, you're probably looking at, you, you know, you'd, 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 you'd want Hoyland to, you know, score maybe, you know, six to eight points more than Solanke over the next three games. And then they want City away, you know, in game week 28. Um, so how likely is that? You know, we already seen. You know, we got bitten by Darwin in a double game week. Whereas if you mm-hmm. just kept Solanke like you did, you you would have been up. So it's just kind of same situation like that, as where you know you probably don't want to be messing around with that with that uh, with that spot and just you know just just go for it. Um, I think the opportunities for you no know, kind of taking risks going elsewhere are going to present themselves yeah. after this game week. Once you know we start you know planning towards game week twenty nine. I think a lot of people are going to go down different routes, uh, you know, for the chip strategies. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like you. I really want to free hit 34. A lot of people are saying that it's too, it's too risky. The fixtures aren't great, and you're going to be losing too many single game week players that have great fixtures. But you can just keep them. You can yeah, keep half I mean, of them, and then just go for, go for a fun like five. You don't have to. You can't. You know. See, see the the free hit isn't about just that that game week. I mean, yeah. look, the fixtures in game week twenty nine aren't great either. I mean, right now we've what four, what three teams? Um, we might get four or five, and you're not going to get a good free hit team, right? Like you know. But the the main thing is what happens around those weeks. Like using your free hit in twenty nine allows you to attack these next three game weeks, mm. um, and then you know set yourself up for you know after game week twenty nine. Same as game week thirty four. If you're using it then, you can just ignore game week thirty four. You know, uh, plan for the game weeks um, before and after it. Um, that's the kind of main advantage of the free hit. And then obviously, you know, when you're playing the free hit, you know, you're you're getting the best possible team. You know, with with possible like you know eleven double game week players. So yeah, the free hit isn't all just only about that game week and what team you can get out. Um, it's about you know the kind of the the before and after as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right, one final thing, just uh, on back on the AI transfers here. Now, uh, guys, you probably know this by now. But the, the, the Fantasy Football Hub AI transfers will never recommend to you that you take a hit. It's a little bit more conservative. However, if you click on custom transfers up here, you can set the exact number of transfers that you want to make. I've set it to two, as Abdullah said that he's pretty confident of, of, of taking a hit this week. And the custom transfer suggestion is still Darwin to Solanke and Jota out, as you said, but actually for Bowen, who always does well on, on metrics and underlying numbers. And he's, he's a player that I've had in my team for quite a lot of the season. Obviously, West Ham are out of form right now, but are we kind of forgetting about him, who's been such an FPL stalwart for a number of years now? Yeah. I mean, Bowen was, like, you know, when I was planning this, like, a few weeks ago, Bowen was one of my, like, the guy I was thinking about bringing in this week. But West Ham haven't scored in the last three games. Um, They seem, like, I think they've lost, or they're not won in the last six. And, they, you know, they do seem like they're really kind of, you know, they, they've taken a turn for the worse. And I think going forward, they've really missed... Uh, Paqueta. Yeah. Um, but the good news is I think what well, good news for West Ham is that he was training last week. Um, I think he will be in contention to start or at least be in the bench this week. Um, so they should get better going forward. But I just think with so many options, you know, that are I think there's a few options, like at least three options I think that are probably better than going at the moment. And I'd I'd put like obviously Huang, Bailey, and, and Louise ahead of him just now. Um, you know, two of those guys are on penalties and, and got uh, better fixtures and, and better teams. So I think Bowen is a solid option. Like, you know, he has got a fiction 26 and a fiction 29. I wouldn't be surprised if he did if he did well over you know these next few weeks. But for me, I think there's there's kind of more upside there in that position. Okay. Fair enough. I think that's gonna do it for this one. Um Abdul, thank you very much as always for your yeah. for your tips and advice. Uh look forward to seeing how your team ends up looking. As always, your final team reveal will be posted on the website. And guys, yeah. if you want your own custom AI recommended transfers personalized to your team, the link to sign up to Fantasy Football Hub is down below as always. Good luck this game, my friend. 
Let's hope for another green arrow.